Try to interruption. So you're threading the needle if you've got a roller or a ball or something lovely to roll on. Just a nice way to do it. You should get that big stretch between the shoulder blades. If you don't have a roller, that's fine. You're in your normal thread the needle. So inhale up, exhale thread. Beautiful. One more on that side and then swap your roller to the other side or just swap arms. So if you're on the roller, you're not opening up, you're just rolling through. The arm you're resting on is bending and you thread the roller through. Exhale to thread. The bum kind of sticks out behind you as you thread the arm through. Lovely, one more on this side. Good, both hands down onto the floor and you're gonna circle the whole body, keeping the back flat. You're circling around. If you're not happy on hands and knees here, remember you can do this on your feet with your hands on a chair, works quite well. You can get the same wrist mobility work and the same work for what we're stretching. Go around the other side, just using your breath, warming everything up. Excellent, come into the center, cat stretch. So exhale, flex your spine up towards the ceiling. Inhale, lengthen to neutral and open the chest. So I don't want really dumpy through the low back, just think of opening, lengthening the chest. So exhale to press up to the ceiling, use your abs. Inhale, lengthen, open the chest. Exhale, press up to the ceiling. Inhale, lengthen, open the chest. One more, exhale, press it up. Inhale, abs are lengthening here. Turn your hands backwards and just sit back slightly so you can stretch in through all those wrist extensors. So wrists are, um, if wrists get sore when we stay on hands and knees a long time, the stretch can be really nice. And again, you can do it against the wall. It's just giving all those wrist flexors a bit of a, especially if you do a lot of computer and phone stuff, a bit of a chance to stretch it out. Excellent. Coming onto your bottoms, please. I'll get you to come into a mermaid position if you can. If not, just sit whatever way the legs are happy. So a mermaid position is one toe pointed to the opposite knee. All right, you're just gonna side bend over. The whole time we're doing this, you're trying to keep both sit bones on the floor. Not always possible for everyone, but that's the goal. You're gonna from here circle. So draw a big rainbow on your carpet or floor, and then come over to our other side bend, and up, start the way you finished. So over for a side bend, big circle on the floor and then up. Nice, so inhale over, exhale, circle around. So really nice for the hip mobility here and up. The last time on this side, over, circle it around on the floor in front of you. Back to a side bend and up. Good, legs fling over to the other side. So toe to the opposite knee, sit bones down. If this doesn't work, you sit cross-legged or pop the legs up in front of you. So inhale over, Exhale, circle the arms in front of you on the floor. Back through a side bend and up. Start the way you finish, so side bend, arms. Rainbow around on the floor, back through a side bend and up. Inhale, over side bend, exhale, circle. Good, and last time here, inhale over. Exhale, circle it around, hands onto the floor, side bend and back up. Good, legs up in front of you but a little bit wide here. So think just wider than shoulders. So you're gonna do your rotation and saw. So you rotate towards one thigh, so belly button to thigh, you forward bend. From here, you restack the spine and come center. So rotate, bend forwards. Roll it back up, back to center. Rotate, forward bend. Restack and back to center. Rotate, bend it forwards. Restack the spine and center. One more each side. Forward bend, so you're reaching through that foot. Up, back to center. Arms stay parallel with the floor if possible. Reach, rebuilding the spine and back to center. Good, so nice, we're rolling it down to the floor for me. One vertebrae at a time, so take your time. Roll it down, reach the arms up and circle them down to your sides. So from here, just a really nice, slow roll up into bridge position. So think, do a little tilt, press the feet into the floor, 
roll one vertebrae at a time up. It's actually a really nice way to stretch your hip flexors open. So the front of the hips is open, your ribs are down, you're gonna reach the arms up, exhale them back towards your ears, inhale up to the ceiling. So as you exhale, take the hands back towards the ears, but keep the ribs melting down, inhale up. Exhale, reach it back towards the ears, inhale up to the ceiling. Exhale, reach it back to the ears. Inhale to the ceiling, and then roll it down one vertebrae at a time, all the way back to neutral. From here, heels on the floor, legs slightly wider than hip distance, and you're just gonna take knees side to side. And you can do it fairly quickly. We're mobilizing that lumbar spine, trying to press the knees down towards the floor, if possible. Really good, so pelvis can move, ribs are staying as still as possible. Excellent, bring the feet back in line with the pelvis, roll it up again, one vertebrae at a time, press the feet into the floor, melt the ribs down, press to the hips. Good, arms come up, reach them back, and up to the ceiling. Good, exhale, arms back, inhale up. Two more, make sure ribs to hips stay connected as you reach back. And up, the last time, reach it back. And up, roll it down, one vertebrae at a time. Take your time. Good, feet are wider, knees side to side. Good. This time, bring your right knee in, like you wanna bring your right knee to the ground. Pop your left foot onto that right knee, like your left leg's gonna pull the right knee to the ground. You should get a really nice stretch through the right hip and glute. Left shoulder has to stay down here. Right through that whole right side, you should be getting the stretch. So the left foot's putting pressure on that right knee to pull it in towards the ground. Engage your tummy muscles as you start to come out of it. Other side, so your right foot goes onto the left knee and pulls the left knee in towards the ground. That's an internal rotation of the hip. And it's just putting that little bit of pressure as much as you need for a nice stretch through the hip. Really nice for anybody with pains in the bums, sore bum muscles, you know who you are. Excellent, so pressing down, stretching out that bottom. Good, use your tummy, bring the knees back up to the ceiling. Grab your band, where's my band, and pop it around one foot. If you prefer to be a bit more comfortable, pop something under the head here, go for it, because we are gonna be here for a couple minutes. But take your band, spread it as wide as you can. Hopefully it's not all clumped up like mine. Pop it around your right foot and reach that right leg up towards the ceiling. Now you want it around the ball of the foot because we're gonna do some footwork here. Now the other leg can be bent or straight, doesn't really matter. They're not as flexible, your hamstrings keep it bent. You want your spine neutral as well, which means you want a little bit of space under the low back. It will make you feel the stretch sooner. So the stretch should be in the back of the leg. Now, if you make the leg straighter, you'll get more of it into kind of that neural line. So behind the knee. If you bend it a bit more, you'll get more of the hamstring muscle belly in the back of the thigh. So play with where it feels like you need to stretch the most. All right, so what I'm gonna get you to do now is I want you to feel a neural stretch because we're gonna do some nerve flossing or nerve stretching here. So pull your toes down towards you, straighten the leg as much as you can until it feels icky through the back of the leg. If you don't feel anything, your leg needs to be closer towards you. Now inhale, point the toe up to the ceiling. Exhale, flex the foot until you feel the ooh, icky stretch. I usually know when people got it because they make this face. Ooh, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> I'm assuming you're all getting icky face. So it's when you flex your toe down towards you, your whole sciatic nerve line is on stretch. Excellent. Now it's really amazing, just doing 10 of these nerve flossing, how much your flexibility can change just after doing 10 reps. Because what we're doing is we're taking your sciatic nerve and going burp, 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 through the opening of where it, where it belongs. So it can be a really nice way for people who are tight neurally, which is the thing. All right, this time hold your toes down towards you, bend your knee a little bit, and then straighten it back up as much as you can. So again, every time you straighten it up, you're getting right to that point of, oh, that's kind of icky. Yeah, bend and pressing it up. If of course you've had actual disc impingement on your sciatic nerve, 
I don't think anybody who's here today has recently. Um, it's not always the best at the start because angry nerves don't love to be irritated. All right, people who are further along in their rehabilitation, this is a necessary step, okay? But not right at the start where your nerves are angry. All right, hold it up in that icky stretch and you're gonna rotate the whole leg inwards rotate the whole leg outwards. So we're stretching different fibers now of the hamstring and that neural line by rotating in and out with the thigh. Beautiful, hold it parallel so it's facing you. Straighten the other leg onto the ground and cross this leg over the body. So you get the, ooh, another icky stretch right down the side of the leg, sometimes right to the ankle if you're lucky. And that's another quite nervy one here. And breathing. Don't forget to breathe. Don't turn purple. Turn it, bring it back up. Hug your other knee into your chest and you're taking both knees up to the side. I've got a wall here so I can't go that far. I bring the other knee in just because it balances you out. So you should get a nice big inner thigh stretch here. Breathe into that. Keep the legs straight. I'm just bending mine because I've got a wall in my way. Good. Reach the leg back up. Pop the other foot into the band. Take the first foot out of the band. All right, back to the start. So find the stretch, breathe. Feel the difference between the hammy stretch and that more nervy stretch when you straighten the leg. Good, now find somewhere where you do feel the nervy stretch, pull the toes down towards you, and then you're gonna inhale, point the toe up. Exhale, flex the toes down towards you. Inhale up, exhale, flex the toes down. Working through that range of motion every time the toes come down towards you, get to icky stretch. All right, so find out where you need to to really put that nerve line on stretch. Good, now hold the toes down towards you, bend the knee a little bit and press up into a stretch. Good. So I've always been really quite tight nerve wise in the back of my legs because I always sit with my legs bent. Just a comfort thing, I think. But I think the more you do things with straight legs, the longer your hammies get to be. If you're a person that always has sleeps with knees bent and, um, and sits with knees bent, then you get more of that tightness into your hamstrings. So it's good to stretch them out. All right, one more here. Straight the leg up, and you're gonna rotate that whole leg inwards and rotate the whole leg upwards. So just playing with the rotation in the leg here basically just the ball and socket joint of the hip changing, which changes the stretch in all the muscles around the hip and what muscles are stretching. Good, right leg goes down on the floor, left leg crosses over the body and give you the ooh, icky stretch down the side of the leg. Then bring it up, pop the other knee into your hand and you take it out into an inner thigh stretch. So both legs come out, stretching through that inner thigh, this knee is just hugged in and bringing it out so you can balance out here. And breathe. Excellent. Bring that leg up, pop your foot out of the band and roll over onto your side for me, please. Again, if you've got something to lay on, you can pop it under your head. If not, you just pop your head onto your arm. So you're gonna inhale that arm up towards your ear, exhale, circle it out into your windmill stretch. Push yourself away from walls if necessary. You end up back on your side. So really important here, you're getting a spine rotation as well as a shoulder stretch. If for any reason you can't go up towards your ear, you just do an open book type stretch. So you just go straight up and back. All right. So this next one, you find the tightest spot, which is normally about 15 degrees past your ear, and you hold and you relax it down towards the floor. If you can touch the floor with your arm, normally your pelvis isn't stacked enough. If you want your pelvis to stay, your rib cage goes, you shouldn't be able to touch the floor unless you're super crazy flexible. And the stretch should really be through that pec minor, so just that bit that gets very tight from all the computer work and driving and sitting and a lot of us have a bit of computer work during the old lockdown and then the poor kids good bring that leg our leg this is an arm bring it all the way down to your hip and over onto your side and then flip around the other way so you stacked onto your side take that arm up towards the ear side 
side bend, you know what I mean, rotate out, bring it down towards your hips. So you've got three rotations or openings of that arm. On the third one, you find the tightest spot in that arm and you hold. And you breathe. So letting the shoulder and arm and rib cage come down towards the floor. Beautiful, coming over onto your stomach. Um, everybody's favorite, the quad stretch. So you're grabbing onto a shin, ankle foot. Shin's ideal if you can. And what you're trying to do is push your pubic bone down into the floor. The pubic bone into floor as much as possible because that's going to take your low back out of it and make sure you're actually stretching the quad. You can't reach the foot, you last do it with your band. Okay. Now, turning it into a PNF stretch, which is a great way to actually relax a muscle that's really tight. You press your foot into your hand so you're contracting your quad muscle, pubic bone stays down. Now relax and just stretch again. So press your foot into your hand and resist yourself. Don't let yourself move anywhere. And relax and deepen the stretch. One more time, press foot into hand and resist yourself. Good, relax, deepen the stretch, and then go other side. So grabbing onto shin, ankle, foot, making sure your pubic bone's down, feeling the stretch in the front of the thigh or possibly even the hip flexor, depending on where you are the tightest, it's where you feel it. And then you're gonna press your foot into your hand. Relax the contraction, deepen the stretch. So again, press foot into hand. Relax, deepen the stretch. One more time, press foot into hand. Relax, deepen the stretch and hold. And relax the foot down. Now if you don't have a foam roller with you, you're just gonna do your chest openings here. So you press into the floor, lift the heart, lift the chest, and release it back down. If you do have a foam roller, you can either stay on your tummy. I prefer, on um, in kind of a child's pose position with bum back on heels, just because you keep your low back out of it this way. And you press down into the roller, lift the heart, lift the chest, and exhale, release the chest back to neutral. So inhale, whether your hands are on the floor or on the roller, you're lifting the heart, lifting the chest, the upper back stretch here, and exhale to release back down. Couple more, so press in. Lift up, so you're really trying to take your collarbones and your sternum up towards the ceiling, pressing in with straight arms to the roller. Again, if you're on the floor, you're here or here, it's fine. Your rib cage isn't lifted off the floor. You're just focused on upper back. Good. This time, lift it up. If you're on the floor, you're just gonna pull the elbows into the waist, reach them back out for four. If you're on your roller, Pull the elbows in with the hands on the roller and reach it up, keeping that chest lifted. For three, for two, last one. Good, reach the arms out, press your bum back onto your heels and stretch. You can't get bum back onto your heels, you're just up here flexing the spine, trying to get that stretch and the rounding through the back. You're walking your hands over to one side. Think of keeping that opposite bum cheek down so all the stretch should come through the armpit and the bottom of the shoulder. And then over to the other side. Breathing into that stretch, lengthening into that under the shoulder blade. Beautiful. From here, tuck your toes under. Press back into a downward dog position. So lift the bum up towards the ceiling. Knees can stay bent, so you can really press your chest back through the arms here. Take your right leg and step it between the arms. From here, coming up to standing. Push your pubic bone forward so the stretch is through the hip flexor, not through the low back. So pubic bone forwards, ribs down. Good. Left arm comes up towards your ear. 
side bend over to the right. So you're stretching from that hand right down to the knee. Good, coming back up, arm down, opposite arm, right arm up to the side, twist this time, rotate back. Beautiful, coming back down, hands to the floor, change that right leg into a pigeon pose stretch. Left leg comes down, you start by pressing the hips forwards to stretch the hip flexor, and then you come down over it into a glute stretch. If pigeon pose is not working for you, flip onto your back for me and glute stretch here. Good. So you're one or the other. Pigeon pose or rolls onto your back into a glute stretch. Allow your head to relax forward and breathe. Good. Walking up with those arms. Press the hips forwards again to stretch into that hip flexor. Tuck your back toe and press up into a downward dog. Knees bent, pelvis back as much as you can. Now take that left foot, step it between the hands, ground it, come up to standing. So stretches in your right hip flexor this time. That right arm comes up, side bend over to the left. So you're stretching from your hand down to that right knee. Good, lower that arm, take the other arm up to the side, twist it back. Excellent, hands come down to the ground, change that left leg down into pigeon pose or rolling onto your back for your glute stretch. Press the pelvis forward, so you're stretching and opening a little bit more through that right hip and then come down over that left knee. So if you're really flexible through the glute, you can bring your right foot out more. If that torsions the knee too much, you just keep it tucked in. And you're coming over the knee to get the stretch. And breathing. Here we go. Good. Good. Tuck that back toe under. Press up into a downward dog. Lovely. Relax the knees. You're going to finish off with a rib release or a psoas release stretch, which is really important for posture and getting your pelvis and ribs in the right position. So what you're going to do is take anything, whether it's a roller, a bolster, a sleeping bag, a rolled up towel, and you're popping it under your sacrum, quite low under your bum. You don't want it all the way up to the waistband of the pants. Okay, so it's quite low. If you can see where mine is here, check that it's below where the waistband is. Because you want to think about relaxing the waistband of the pants. And as long as your rib cage is off the floor, you are high enough. Because what we're trying to do here is relax the rib cage down to the floor. If the hip flexor and psoas is tight, you'll find your rib cage is up here. All right, a lot of people need to just relax the ribs down, and this is a nice place to do it, but you have to stay for at least three to five minutes because it's quite a gentle and subtle stretch. So you need to stay longer to get the benefits and allow that kind of um, tissue in the front of the hips to just unwind. So you're gonna stay here um, and just think peaceful thoughts. Relax your rib cage down. You can have arms up to the side so your chest stretching at the same time. All right, so you guys get to stay. Um, thank you very much for joining me, and I hope you have a lovely weekend. We're going to do Monday class next week, and then I'm just going to keep it at Mondays after that. So um, there's at least 10 classes now on YouTube, and I'll pop this one as well if you enjoyed the stretch class. So you can cycle through um, what's on there, and then we'll add a new one on Mondays. So that's the plan for now going forward. So if you have any requests or things you'd like to see, please let me know and I'll make sure that, um, that I get to it on the Monday classes. Um, so Mondays will stay at the same time. So I'll see you Monday next week and yeah, have a good one. Enjoy.